Good morning. Welcome. We're so glad to have you here this morning. Whether you're out in the parking lot, let's hear it from the parking lot. <laughs> there they are. <laughs> Thanks, parking lot people. We love you. Um, also, Facebook. Uh, hi, Facebook people. We're happy that you're watching this morning. Wait, what? I'm getting a signal. Oh, we have 10 people. Is that right? Yeah. 10? Great. See, I can't wear my glasses and the mask for it because they can light this up. Ten. I got a ten. I hear you. Okay. Um, so thank you for joining us. Um, I understand that everyone enjoyed our guest speaker or guest pastor last week. Um, he is one of my very good friends in the conference and we're so glad that he could be here with you and I'm glad you all enjoyed getting to know him a little bit. Um, also, thanks for everyone for your kindnesses and cards and uh, texts uh, regarding the death of my mother. I'm so grateful for your support. Um, a happy announcement before we have some so, more challenging announcements. Cookie sale this week, or next week, I mean, uh, at the ramp in the parking lot. We'll have cookies. City Borger is, is arranging this sale. And uh, $8 a pound for cookies. And um, she'll, so if you have any, if you have any questions, call Cindy and she'll be happy to, to talk with you about that. Um, also, Sadly, um, John Harrison, Kim, Kim Henning's uh, nephew and uh, Josie Litzenberger's great, friend, great grandson, broke his arm this week. And so um, that poor little guy cannot catch a break. And he, uh, she, she was, uh, Kim was saying that they were going to try to come to church last weekend and, and then, you know, and, uh, instead, he was having, he, he wasn't able to be here. We're glad that uh, he's doing fine with it. He seems to be doing fine. He's had a lot to deal with. His, but he still gives up his all. He's a great little guy. Um, sadly, this is going to be our last Sunday in the sanctuary. <clears throat> I hate that we have to do this, but we just can't take a chance. And you all know that I love you so much. And if something were to happen to any one of you, um, I could never forgive myself. So we're going to be virtual for the next, I don't know how long. <clears throat> we're going to have to do that until we, until there's a vaccine most likely, or until we see a significant decrease in cases here in the Lehigh Valley. Um, but right now, I just, I can, and I can tell you that every person on your leadership team struggled with this decision. We didn't want to make it. We're sad that we made it. I mean, that we had to make it. And uh, I'm just, we're struggling still to whether, and I know that I am not the only one that, on that group of people in that group of people that has been awake almost every single night uh, since Tuesday because it's just, it was hard to make that call, but we felt like that was the best way to keep you safe. So from here on out, we'll be, uh, you can, we'll be taping on Sunday, or we'll be uh, uh, Facebook living on Sunday morning. We're working on a new setup that hopefully will be, allows, yeah. Phil, did you need to say something about it? We're doing the parking lot too, right? Yeah, parking lot, of course. Anybody can be in a parking lot. So, um, so that will just go mm -hmm. on as it has been now. But if you want to uh, stay home in your jammies and, and watch from your computer, you can certainly do that, make that choice. Um, for right now, we will have, uh, we'll, we'll
will do as we have been. We'll take what will be live on Facebook, and Jenny will upload that to the website on Tuesday. Um, two exceptions to that will be we'll be taping later on this afternoon. We'll be taping Blue Christmas, so that will be up and ready to go later on this week for you to look at at your convenience. And also, one of our Christmas Eve services will be taped ahead of time. We're taping that a week from Monday, and um, then you can watch that again at your convenience. So, we're sad that we have to do this, but we want to keep you safe, and that's our number one priority. Um, are there other announcements from the congregation? Yes, Ken? Where will we drop our offering? That's a good. That's a good question. Um, if we'll we'll do, um, do you think we can do like we did in the summer, and you can give them to the as you're coming in, you can give them to the to the person who's handing out the ones. Can somebody make a note of that so we remember to tell Tammy and okay, thanks the people out there that we're going to do that. Um, and since Ken has so nicely brought up stewardship. Um, we're really, we're, come, we're starting to struggle. The summer went way better than we anticipated financially, and we were grateful for all your contributions, but um, if you haven't sent in a donation in a while, could you please? We would really appreciate it. And um, your dollars are going a long way right now because there's a lot going on in the world and um, we're, we're trying to make a difference. So we'd appreciate, I know uh, Phil and Diana both would appreciate, both treasurers from both congregations would very much appreciate your contributions right now. <laughs> if there's nothing other, if there are no other announcements, then I would very much like to invite you to join with me as we worship God Almighty. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steady love, steadfast love endures forever. Amen. And Jenny and Ron are going to light the candle this morning. We light the third candle of Advent. We look to John, the one you sent, to point us to your light. The light will come into our world and enlighten everyone. God sent John the baptizer to prepare the world, to prepare, prepare the people for the coming of Jesus Christ, the true light of the world. John called for people to repent of their sins and to live faithfully. He baptized with a cleansing water and proclaimed the new light that Christ, the one who would follow him, would bring. This Advent, we ask for God's mercy and a joyful new beginning. Merciful God, we give thanks that you send messengers like John to call us to greater faith. We ask that in these days we prepare for you in prayer and ask of holy compassion. Forgive us and lead us to your light. Amen. Shine on us, God of justice. Guide our path through the moon by night. Bear with us in wisdom's glory. Come to us, O Christ the light.
and good news. Some of us are discouraged. Others are brokenhearted. Some of us are joyful and filled with laughter. Others of us long for better circumstances. Restore us to each other and you, O oh God. Restore us to each other and you, O oh God. Oh, wait, that was your part. <laughs> I just said that. I, <laughs> As we comfort one another and celebrate the good news, we remember God is with us and for us. Come, love us worship. Rejoice always begins the reading from 1 Thessalonians. Isaiah and the psalmist make clear that God is turning our mourning into laughter and shouts of joy. All God's children not a road go the words of the spiritual. It is not so much a stately, formal, pressed outfit as it is a set of party clothes, clothes we are happy to wear. We receive that robe in baptism, and in worship we gather for a foretaste of God's party. God, who loves justice and truth, we remember your enduring covenant that promises good news to the poor, the brokenhearted, and the captives. You promise comfort to all who mourn, and a mantle of praise in place of discouragement. Refocus us on your restoration in you. We are a, blessed, we are a people blessed, and we rejoice and praise you, O oh God. Grow righteousness and praise within us this day, we pray. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Mighty God, you call us to proclaim the good news, but we can be slow in proclaiming joy and faith. There are times when grief weighs us down. Bitterness creeps into our hearts and minds. We feel unworthy of the task of discipleship, afraid to claim the particular gifts you have given us. Like John the Baptizer, however, we are not called to save the whole world. We are called to point to Jesus and invite others into a loving community. Restore our faith. Refocus our understanding of who we are in Christ, that we may rejoice once more and witness to the light. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. As a garden grows its seed, so God will grow righteousness and praise. We are made to grow in faith. We are beloved by God, cherished and forgiven always. God is good, and so are we. Thanks be to God. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel, for you have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. to bring good news to the oppressed, 
to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the people. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garment of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bride from decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adores herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. Psalm, Psalm 126. The writer talks of God restoring the fortunes of Zion. It is easy in our 21st century outlook to think of that in terms of things. The footnote in the NRSV corrects that skew and reminds us that is the people who are restored, rather than what the people have. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then we were like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of the Negev. Those who sow with tears will weep with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering, shouldering the sheep. Paul is writing to a church, a congregation who has suffered loss. Paul wants them to know, however, that death and sorrow and sadness do not have a last word. Christ will come again, and in the meantime, they are to keep busy. That busyness is to include rejoicing, praying, giving thanks, discerning what God is doing, and testing things out. Waiting so far as Paul is concerned, it is not about sitting back. It is not something passive, but rather a time of continuing to grow in faith, and a time to celebrate God's goodness while modeling everything that is good and peaceful, letting God's spirit shine. The epistle lesson is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 24. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who called you is faithful, and he will do this. This morning's gospel is John 1, it comes from John 1. John's gospel describes Jesus as the light of the world, and John the Baptist is presented as a witness to Jesus, one who attracts, who directs attention away from himself to Christ, the true light. Hallelujah! Show us your steadfast love, and grant us your 
your salvation. Listen to the gospel of Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And then they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? And John said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees, and they asked him, then why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor a prophet? And John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of the sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. This is the good news. So, I know that there are some kids watching out there, uh, if not right now, then later on. And so, I have a question for you all. What in the world does Christmas and Christmas trees and all of our decorations and Santa Clauses, what does all that have to do with a baby Jesus being born in a manger? Over the years, Christmas has been sort of uh, co-opted by the rest of our society, right? It's, it's, it's gone, gotten away from just Christians and has become many things that it never was intended to be. And yet, in all of it, there is a radiance about Christmas. Christmas makes us show our lights a little stronger, I think. John said that we aren't the light, right? He told those people that he wasn't the light. Jesus is the light, but all of us, John included, are a reflection of Jesus. If you don't know what a reflection is, you can look in a mirror and you can see your reflection. And I hope when you look in that mirror, and this is, this is good for adults, too. It doesn't have to be just for children. When you look in that mirror, look at your eyes. Look deeply, look closely at your eyes, and see how they sparkle and shine. I think that's a little bit of a reflection of Jesus' life. And I think at Christmas time, even though we have a lot of other things vying for our attention, not the least of which is my beloved Hallmark, you know, but I, I admit there are contradictions there. <laughs> but the light, the light is what Christmas is all about. So, I'm going to ask you this week, even though it might be hard to share because I know lots of you are staying home and not seeing anybody right now. So you have to do this with your family, with your mom and your dad. I want you to show your light this week. Let it shine brightly. 
Share some of that sparkle from inside of you with a brother or a sister or your mom or dad. Do something nice for somebody else. That's how your light shines. Do something kind. Take care of something. Take out the trash without being a complainer. There are all kinds of ways at this time of the year that don't cost one cent that help us all to shine a little brighter for Jesus. Let's have a prayer. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, God, and open our ears to the word of your words of your prophets, that anointed by your spirit, we may testify to your life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and brother, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. <laughs> I'm going to read these words from uh, the Thessalonians scripture again. Listen hard. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the word of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. These words are the closing words, possibly of the earliest writings in the New Testament. We quote these verses and use the, these when we're praying a blessing on someone. Sometimes in the hospital. Sometimes when people are taking their new membership vows, we use those words. They're rapid-fire words. They're bite-sized pieces of advice that we would all do well to remember. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. The trouble is, as simple and as succinct as these instructions are, these words just aren't easy to follow, aren't that easy to follow. The context is that Paul is writing to a church, a congregation, who has suffered loss, great loss. Sound familiar? Paul wants them to know that death and sorrow and sadness don't have to be the last word. Christ will come again, and in the meantime, they're supposed to keep busy. And that busyness is supposed to include rejoicing and praying and giving thanks and discerning what God is doing in the world and testing things out. Waiting so far as Paul is concerned is not about sitting back, it's not something passive, but it's a time for continuing to grow in faith. It's a time to celebrate God's goodness while sharing everything that is good and peaceful. It's about letting God's light, God's spirit shine forth from us. And in John's Gospel, Jesus Jesus' cousin is not even called the Baptist. It's just John. For the gospel writer of this text, that's a deliberate choice. Because the writer wants to make it abundantly clear that John's primary function is not to stand in the River Jordan baptizing people. No, his primary function is to witness to Jesus Christ. That's why this gospel, we don't read of John baptizing Jesus. John is not the light, we are told, but only came to testify to the light. When we pick up his story a few verses later, John himself says as much. John, we're told, is asked who he is, and how he chooses to answer that question is in relation to the one he bears witness to. 
where he says, I am not Messiah, I am not Elijah, I am not a prophet. I do, though, echo scripture and point to the light. And here's the amazing thing about God. God's Son is sent into the midst of humanity to redeem and restore the world. And God relies on a human being to signpost that fact. John does so, however, acutely aware of his own limitations. I baptize with water, John says, and among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I'm not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. The fourth gospel's account of who John is and what he is about offers us an opportunity to talk about the identity and to consider who we each one are in relationship to Jesus. And it also challenges us, just as John did, to use every opportunity to point to the light. The light that dispels darkness, especially perhaps at Christmas in 2020. You see, even in the darkness, there are pinpricks of light. Even in the darkness, there are others who are sparkling, sharing their light, and encouraging others to shine just a little bit brighter. It seems that the pandemic is never ending, isn't it? It is still having detrimental effects, not just on those who suffer from COVID, but from on the mental health of every single one of us. But we're Christians. And so what we do is we hold on to hope, even in that darkest, shadowy valley, where we can point in order to help other people find the anchor and the security that they need, which leads us to finding comfort and strength and peace and even joy. The good news of the coming Christ talks far more to the life there is beyond things. So many of us are tempted to hold on and set store by our stuff. But perhaps this year, 2020, is a year we're talking about relationships being our greatest gifts. The gift of family relationship, the gift of friendship, but most especially the gift of being loved by God, by being about by being in relationship with Jesus. Perhaps this year we can emphasize that light that comes to us from spending time with God. 2020 certainly has had an ability to rebalance some people's lives. They've given it, they've found new meaning and purpose in the challenges. And given that going shopping these days can be a problem for you, perhaps this is a year for rejoicing in what we already have than in what we hope to get or to give. That's an understanding, of course, that as we rejoice and as we give thanks and as we count our blessing, we understand that we have the privilege and the responsibility of sharing God's goodness with others. How can we, just a handful of folks, spread the light in these times that are so dark for the world? Perhaps we can expand our vision so that we share our lights collectively. And if we do it, then Citronia is ablaze. And then, if others do it, and others and others, pretty soon the entire world is shining brightly. There's one thing clear in today's passages, and that is we are not passive when it comes to God's mission in this world. Jesus came for us to work with us and through us. So how do we plan 
to share the vision God has for our community, our nation, and our world, knowing, of course, that God goes before and behind and within and above us. This week, share your light brightly. I'd like to end with a prayer written by a pastor in Scotland. It talks about God with us, Emmanuel. Even if we cannot gather in person, Emmanuel, baby Jesus, God is with us. Even if some Christian Christmas traditions have to go, Emmanuel, God with us. Even if we might not get to hug family and friends, God is with us, Emmanuel. Even if we can't sing carols beside each other in the pews, God is with us. Even if the Christmas cheer is harder this year, Emmanuel, for God is with us. Amen. Thank you, Scott. Um. Martha, Pat, Mary, and the family of all. 
comes with that. Make your church a refuge, a place of refuge and healing. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of sinners and saints, you offer joy even in the midst of our grief. We are grateful for the beloved and perfect people whose lives testify to your radiant love, especially Lucy, martyr of the church. Anoint all who mourn with the oil of gladness. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And hear us in. the dismissal. I just want to thank you for being here. Please take care of yourselves and let us know how we can help you out during the next uh, few weeks. And um, 
If you have a problem getting online, let us know and we'll see how we might be able to help you. Oops. Um, I also just want to tell you, I'm not going to be, sh I'm not going to be touching elbows or anything today because I've, I've been to Kansas, even though Craig and I took tests that we were negative, um, I just don't want to take any chances. So you'll understand that I love you all very much. I'm giving you a big virtual hug and, and uh, thanks so much for being here. And we will uh, see you in the kitchen. Be together again, otherwise we'll be on the parking lot. Oh, I also for, forgot to ask to tell you all that um, have, on Christmas Eve we'll have your poinsettias out there for you to pick up, so don't worry about that, okay? Anything else? I think that's it. Thank you so much for being here, and now my friends, go in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks to you guys. Thank you.